Hi, my name is Jeremy. I am a fabricator and mechanic, and I am on a journey to build a 1937 Auto Union Type C. In this episode, we're going to complete the adapter plate between the transmission and uh, engine. We will be focusing on how to align the engine to the adapter plate via the same center hole as the last half. I'll show you all about um, how to mark the blind holes that we can't get to the back of with our transfer punch. We will also show you all about trimming the uh, excess off and the making the mounting points for using this as a mid-engine plate to bolt to the chassis. So this will be one of the engine mounting points in the car. So I believe that's it. Let's get to the video. Here is our plate, and we have all of our holes dimpled. There's one there. So we have three more that are close. This one, this one, and this one. I don't think they're going to be as close. Well, they're definitely not going to be as close as this one, so they're not as big of a deal, except for this guy. It's pretty close. But I think I have a plan on how to deal with this. We'll have to see whether or not it'll work, but we'll go from there. I'll cover that when I get to it. It looks like this on the back side. You can see the countersink. It takes up a lot of room, and then once you put the bolt in, it covers up a lot of the hole. So my plan is going to be, once this is bolted onto the motor, torque these down where they need to be so that they're, you know, indexed properly mark them um, to the plate and then relieve this and uh, possibly run a tap back through it to tap the head of the bolt because this plate will just become basically part of the back of the engine once this is done and all the ones that are really close I believe are up on the block up on the top of the block which would be this is the top uh, so I think the ones that are all really close will be able to be left on the block if you need to take off the main girdle for something. But that's where we are right now. I'm going to start drilling out all of these holes. I think there's eight more to do. I'm going to drill these all out, get them countersunk. So I bought a 45-degree uh, router bit, and it's working pretty well. Uh, it leaves a really nice finish, and it will go deep enough to fully sink the head of the bolt in there. So, that's a plus at least. So, you can see how deep I've had to go so far. The mark on it. But it's a wood tool, but aluminum, aluminum you can work with uh, wood tools. So, that's where we are. I'm going to drill these, get them all countersunk on the drill press so they're all nice and even, and then go from there. So first thing we do is we're going to pop this loose, there we go, and take out this center plug. You can see it was just to mill this down to match the input shaft, and then hopefully we can just screw this in. This is plan A. We'll screw this in, and if it's not too tight, hopefully we can use this to pull out the center plug. But if it feels like it's getting too much, we have a second option. Yeah, that's coming loose. Yeah, so you can actually see. Lighter. We should be getting close to popping loose, I believe. Oh. Come on. Success. 
little bit of marking. Uh, the inside of the crank's not hurt though. There's these little slidey bits. You can see we had really good contact all the way around both steps of the plug, of both both steps of this plug. So we had really good contact in two separate places on the crankshaft, which is what we wanted. So this worked out perfectly. This bad boy right here. It's a little bit harder to line up when you get no center down. But it does line up nice and easily. And then we we'll have all of these countersunk head bolts to do it as well. These ones are numbered because I did those beforehand. Oh yeah, I had done this one. So see this one, number three, three little divots there. Number one, it goes up here. And number two, just to just double check. Run these all in. Have to do a little bit of clocking work. There. There we go. With our normal wrench here. Okay. So these will run down. Actually, we can use this breaker bar. That should be somewhat easier. Go a little bit more. Right there. Right there, I believe. Perhaps I believe. Yeah, it needs to go a little bit more. There we go. Magnifique. So this one I haven't relieved yet because I figured I would do one afterwards. But those all fit nicely. We'll run in our front bolt as well. There we have it. So then, what I did, take my little die grinder here. I'm just going to cut it into a roughly circle. Something like that. Put our tap in. And then we will tap the head of the bolt as well so that we have a little bit of retention on just the steel. Once we get that all the way down, then remove the tap. Now that our threads are all uniform, blow that out again. We'll take our drill, drill out behind here. A ways. Blow it out. Put our tap back in. We'll blow that off too, actually. Put a little bit of lube on it. Put our tap back in here. Thusly. And we will proceed to tap the material in the block so that we have as much thread engagement as possible and we do not have to trim any of our bolts this way. Run that down to the bottom of what we drill. 
These only stick through like an eighth of an inch, so going an extra three eighths or half an inch is plenty. Pull out our we're ready to slap the transmission on. So we're going to pick it up and just try to get our input shaft into our center. Like so, and then put in a bit. If you put in one of these. In all the holes. Bolts and holes. Bolts and holes. Voila! We are one piece. Check that out, guys. And this will be, it'll use the starter from the Mercedes, so we won't have to worry about having enough starter torque. These guys will run up along there. I am ecstatic. Look at that. There you have it. Mercedes uh, M137 V12, 5.8 liter to Subaru TY 751, I think. Yeah, TY 751. Six speed Subaru transmission. So, this is the Subaru starter hole. I'll build a blank off plate for it and get longer bolts for these two. And that's pretty much it. I have to trim, mark the outside and trim it, of course. And I think most of the place, most of the way around, the, uh, well, you can, that's cool, you can see some of the, the bolts into the M137. Most of the way around, the uh, uh, Subaru is actually bigger, which surprised me. It was un unpleasant that four of the eight bolts, um, were really close and that one dial pin was really close but it's all together okay so I have marked out the inner concentric ring and the outer and then we have here kind of hard to see here's a good better this will be the four tabs there's one on each corner I went off of the bottom of the oil pan line here which uh, the back of the oil pan is flat, or main girdle, whatever it is. And I turned down a little plug, put a little divot in the center, and used that to set my stylus on. Then scribed these uh, circles. I messed up over here because I drilled some holes through for the Subaru starter flange, and I went inside of my marks. So I'll probably just weld these up. This one will be easy and this one a little bit harder, but I might not even do anything. I might just leave those alone. But I've also drilled a hole here, half inch hole, and that will be where the uh, blade of the jigsaw will fit in. And we'll cut the inner ring out first, and then we will follow these lines and we'll cut the outer circle and the four ears out um, with this. The outer ring is the diameter of the um, Mercedes. Or no, the inner ring is the diameter. These are dictated off of the Mercedes and the Subaru all falls within that ring as well. Then over here there'll be a little bit of a, a bulge continued out from our mounting line. I didn't blue this but I can see it well enough when I'm cutting it. It comes out there and then there'll be a little bit of a bloop for the uh, starter and then that will just kind of continue this line down and then we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming where this comes back in straight down straight across so after a couple hours of cutting and then I did a little bit of, of sanding on the edges to clean them up just a bit this is the final product I have to Get off the Daikon Blue, of course, but 
Other than that, I probably deburr the edges some too. And you can see where our four ears are. This actually goes like that, that's up. So we got an ear here, 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 and here for mounting. That way, um, when you bolt the motor in, you can just bolt this into the chassis and the transmission can just hang out behind it. And that way you don't have to worry about having nearly as much support structure for the transmission in the back of the car, which will help lighten it and keep it from getting extraordinarily tail heavy. Not very heavy at all. This only weighs just maybe a couple pounds. So the next step will be getting all the die come off and deburring all the edges because they're pretty sharp right now. Because I went through, you know, I went through four blades, I think. This is the fourth blade. And I did cut some of it on our bandsaw, but it wasn't big enough to get the, all of it. So I think I got these long edges with it, which saved a lot of time. And I think this one and this one, but it didn't have enough throat to do both. Because when it goes on the engine permanently, all of the, uh, all these engine fasteners will be Loctited with red Loctite because this is just basically going to become part of the engine. And these bottom ones, if you need to take out, you'll have to heat them up and uh, do that to remove the thing. But the last thing I want is for these bolts to loosen up when this is all bolted in the car because you can't get to these. So these are all covered up by the transmission. But I'll probably put a couple of half inch bolt holes just so I have some, you know, some options when I'm making the, the, the chassis around it. But those will be the rear of the engine mounts. I, I decided to go ahead, I might just even use just these bottom two and then build, or I might use all of them and build a bracket out here that sits on an isolator mount. But this is gonna be the rear uh, mount for the powertrain. So the transmission mount won't get bolted to probably anything. It might have a really light brace back there, but I doubt even that. Because the less weight you have behind the rear wheels, the better. We'll try to keep as much of the structure in front of this plate as possible. Keep the weight balance decent. But uh, that's pretty much it. I'll clean this up and then uh, drill and tap a couple holes and we'll slap bang this dude on the motor.